You've completed course one, now it's time to keep the momentum going. This course, Humber College Real Estate Course Two, is commonly referred to as the beast. This is the biggest course of the entire program. Why they chose course two to really test us, I'm not sure. But if there had to be a huge one, I don't mind it being second. Let's get into the length, how to navigate the course, and what I focused on most, coming up. Hey, what's up guys, Callum Moore here. On this channel, I share information that we need to achieve real estate success. If you haven't yet, consider subscribing. At any point during the video, check out the description below. I list links to what we discuss, all my recommendations, and how to contact me down there. Let's get into the video. Okay, so even though this is only course two of four plus two simulation sessions, after completing this course, it really feels like the heavy lifting is done. And we can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Because after this one, we have course three, which is only nine modules, course four, which has 15 modules, but there's a lot of repetition, and the two simulation sessions, which are only a week long each. So yes, the beast. The beast is 20 modules, and it took me 40 days to read the material and study. We are also into what you will see now from here on out, as far as the exam goes. Exams are now 115 questions, and you have three hours, up from the 75 questions and two hours you had for course one. And again, this is what it will be now moving forward, uh, not counting the two exams for the simulation sessions. Okay, just a super quick mind hack that I did, and I want you to know about the exams before we get into the size of the course. On these 115 question exams, we can get 28 questions wrong and still pass with a 76%. Just keep that in mind as you're writing the exam. Nobody will ever know your exam marks. A pass is a pass. Okay, let's break down the size of course two first. After adding up all of the Humber estimated hours to complete the entire course, we have 152 hours and 40 minutes. This is a great number to know just so we can plan how long it's going to take us. So by now, if you've watched my previous video on how I completed the entire program in four and a half months, I first count up the amount of time Humber thinks it will take us to read through the material and take off a percentage of how fast I read at. You will know this as well now as you have completed course one and have a good idea of how fast you can read through the material. So as I was progressing through course one, I was finding out that I was reading even faster than my original judgment of the first module and now was able to read at about 60% of what they suggested. So my speed was 60% of 152 hours, which is about 90 hours. I knew I was going to read three hours a day, which is 30 days to read through the material. And in this case, I wanted 10 days to go back and study the modules. I figured I could do two modules per day of studying with Passit. Passit again is the third party software I use to help me study and refer back to the material when I need it. So I had 40 days needed to read the material and study, and I would book my exam 41 days from the start. Take this all into consideration only if you care about uh, time management and getting it done as fast as I did. But 100%, you have two years to complete the entire course. There is no rush at all. Move at your own pace. Some people watching this might even be able to study six to eight hours per day. So of course, to each their own. Okay, so on to the material. Course one is real estate essentials and now we're on to real estate transactions. The first five modules of this course, I actually really liked. I felt we were finally getting into some actual learning material that wasn't just REBA. REBA, of course, is very important and will come up throughout the entire program. But yes, moving on and learning was great. Explaining services, documenting relationships, understanding residential property types, factors impacting negotiations, this actually, I really loved, I felt was right up my alley. And of course, the role of third-party professionals. Okay, so the role of third-party professionals comes up a lot on these exams. Just know that how the questions are worded and how we are supposed to act as professional real estate salespeople is that if we do not know something and we are not professionals, we must always refer to a third-party professional. We are always protecting our clients and we are never lying or anything like that just to get a deal done. 
So for every question on the exam, if they are giving you the option to refer to a third party professional and you think to yourself, hey, I'm pretty handy, I could probably give them an opinion on the state of that foundation or something. We are not professionals and they will always want us to say, I suggest referring to a third party professional. It comes up a lot, not just on course two exam, but throughout the entire program. Okay, so on to modules six, seven, and eight. These for me were a little dry and actually a little overwhelming. I don't know that much about construction and I don't picture myself having many of these conversations in a professional manner. Of course, this might not be you, you might love construction, but just know this, and I've mentioned it before, there is a lot of common sense when it comes to these multiple choice questions. If there is a topic or even two or three topics that are so in depth and there's going to be no way you can memorize all of this and compress it into one exam, there won't be 10 to 20 questions on these subjects that we're struggling with. There's going to be one to three. So focus on the fundamentals, not the crazy specifics. Okay, so module nine covers marketing. Module 10, property conditions impacting disclosure. You will learn what does and doesn't need to be disclosed and to who, a client or a customer. Just remember that honesty is always the answer and to not overstep our position as professional salespeople, not third-party professionals. Value and listing price considerations and more marketing into module 12. Showing property and the offer process, all great stuff we need to know. Okay, so module 15, we start to get into contracts. I don't know why, but I actually don't mind contracts at all. Maybe I've seen too many movies or something and always wanted to be a lawyer, I'm not sure. But this was good stuff to me. I even did a video that breaks down how to simply explain all of the pre-printed clauses in the agreement of purchase and sale. The agreement of purchase and sale is the main contract we will use, often referred to as the APS. Check that video out for sure. I'll put it right here and it will help if you're like me and learn very well from video. From there, it goes further into writing conditions and completing the offer. Module 19 goes into a bit more REBA and FinTrack, which you will learn about. Keep in mind as you progress through the course, you will hear a lot more about FinTrack. But like mentioned before, just know the fundamentals. There won't be 10 to 20 questions on it, just more like one to three. And module 20, it finishes with completing a real estate transaction and important steps in the closing process, including roles of sellers and buyers lawyers. 20 full modules. Like mentioned at the start of the video, course two is referred to as the beast. This is the heavy lifting. After this, we start to see the light, I promise. I really hope that helped. And if you're in real estate like myself to help future clients like no one else, reach out and comment below. And down the line, when it's time to start thinking about brokerages, don't hesitate to contact me and find out what eXp Realty and what we're doing for brand new real estate agents. You can book a call with me, it's in the description below, or just DM, email, comment on this video, I get back to everyone. If that's for you, I'll talk to you soon. If not, I'll see you in the next one.